evening. Dan Byler with Randy Yoder bringing you an early evening edition of Westview Lady Basketball action from the Warrior Dome in downtown Emma on LaguanaMedia.com. The Lady Warriors scored the second most points of the year on Thursday night and ended up just short of a victory, having held the lead by a single point with about two minutes to go, but it slipped away. Their plan is to pick up that elusive second win of the season this evening against the out-of-state visitors, the Lady Trojans of Sturgis, Michigan. This is only the fifth game of the season for the Trojans, who are one and three right now, while Westview has moved into the second half of the season with tonight being their 14th game. We invite you to spend the next hour and a half here with us on Laguana Media. Tonight's game sponsor is Weaver Furniture Sales with two locations in Chipchewana, south of US 20 on County Road 75 North and in the Davis Mercantile on Main Street in downtown Chipchewana. The pregame sponsor for this year's season is JR Solutions, providing unlimited internet no matter where you live. Our halftime sponsor is Pizza Depot in Millersburg and with a new location opening soon in Middlebury. This evening's game is also brought to you by Shipshawana Trading Place, featuring the Shipshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday beginning at 9 a.m. My Height Auto Body, US 20 West in LaGrange. Yoder Crossroads, located south of Shipshawana on the southwest corner of State Road 5 and US 20. By Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma. The Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka. Stutzman Power Equipment on US 20 West in Shipshawana. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Chipshi Automotive Service, also just south of 5 and 20 in Chipshawana. By Laguana, your local creative services provider. Animal Care Clinic of Topeka, located directly across from the Topeka Sale Barn. By Jerry Standard Service in downtown Middlebury. And by Southwind Flooring on 1000 West in Chipshawana. Today's game is a presentation of Laguana Media and the IHSAA Champions Network. We'll be back with today's JR Solutions pregame show after this 30 second timeout. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture located just south of US Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana, family owned and operated since 1989. Tonight's Westview pregame show brought to you by JR Solutions, providing unlimited high speed internet no matter where you live. Call them at 574 349 7673. And Randy, we just watched an exciting uh, JV game. Uh, Westview had held the, a, a fairly large lead at halftime and ended up. It slipped away from him right at the end there. Yeah, it did. Uh, Sturgis's press kind of gave us some fits there in the latter part of the game and uh, let it slip away. But uh, I always look forward to this game as, as a coach. Uh, about eight years ago, we put this game on our schedule. We thought it'd be fun to play Sturgis or close, you know, in terms of a bus ride, it's not that far. And being out of state, we just thought it might be fun to play them. We actually played Three Rivers for a few years too, but uh, I enjoyed it. I had known the Sturgis head coach and we had played each other in the summertime a few times, so we got Mrs. Matthew to put it on the schedule and uh, it was always kind of a fun game to play for me. Yeah, and apparently their uh, schedule is a little different than ours, it's this being only their fifth game of the season and we're sitting at number 14 already. Right, yeah. I think their volleyball season goes about three weeks longer than ours, so they get a late start and their guys are in the same boat. I think they've only, most teams have only played three or four games. In the early stages of this rivalry, it was kind of interesting because Indiana allows you to play five quarters, you know, JV and varsity. Oh, sure. When we went up there, we, uh, we abided by the Michigan rules. When they came down here, they abided by our rules. But now, I think in the last couple of years, they've adopted the five-quarter rule also in Michigan. So prior to that, they, you could only play four? Yes, when yes, we so. went on their court. Okay. Another, another rule that was different in the early years, they played seven-minute JVs when we only played six. Of course, now Indiana has adopted the seven-minute sure. JV. So we just kind of had to remember <laughs> which court we were on as to how we did things. <laughs> sort of like in the major leagues when they play yeah. <laughs> across the divisions and then you have the, the designated the, the hitter DH. or not. Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's true. So, Good yeah. point. So, but, yeah, yeah, so uh, 
going back real quick to that JV game, Shanna Miller hit, hit a couple threes for us tonight. She had 10 points leading the way for us. Uh, yeah. I think the big difference probably was uh, uh, needed to make sure, talking about saving quarters, uh, make sure that we have J.J. Whetstone available for some action tonight. Uh, Morgan Reeksecker not going to be here tonight as her older sister. Lauren, I believe, is getting married today, or maybe she's already married. But in any mm -hmm. case, Morgan is at the wedding, or will be, or whatever. But yeah. she's not here this evening, so we'll be short one of our starters. And then, uh, uh -huh. and so J.J. had played in the first half of the game, and we had a 16 to five lead I think at halftime yeah but her uh, ball handling skills trying to get through that press or the lack of those then in the second half made a big difference <laughs> yeah and, uh, you're right so, so so we'll see what happens tonight we've uh, we, we still have uh, looking at the scoring over the last four games if, if I look at the scoring over the last four games we've had a couple girls that have done really well um, Karis Weinberg for the season, she's averaging 3.8 points a game, but over her last four games, she's averaging 11.1. <laughs> and yeah. I think a lot of that, she's been driving in hard. Now, sometimes she ends up getting in there and has got nowhere to go, and she causes turnovers, but the fact that she's driving in there is making things happen. Yes. So I yep. I guess as a coach, I'd be okay with that, you know, just making making things happen. Yeah. And she is getting points out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Hope Bortner also over the last, uh, for the season, she's at 7.8 points a game, and average, but over the last four games, again, 9.5 points, so a little bit higher. And then uh, Bree Corey, she's had a couple big games here at the end, but also had some where not quite so high. So her average is also 7.8, but then against Fremont the other night, she had 16 points. That was a personal record yeah. for her. So, And I, I love the way they've been pushing the ball inside to her and she's just spinning inside getting getting shots and she's figured yeah. out that she, she can she can get those shots yeah yeah I really like her footwork around the basket she made some really nice moves for a sophomore I was really impressed uh, back uh, in the Fremont game on Thursday evening also you mentioned Weinberg I agree as a coach I think the pluses are certainly outweighing the minuses she does turn it over occasionally but boy she she loosens up the defense by driving and she she fed Bree for a nice Right, baseline yeah. pass right before halftime the other night. I just like her aggressiveness and that attacking mentality. Uh, I think this is a big one for us. You know, we I thought we played well with purpose and energy the other night. We came up a bit short at the end, but boy, if we could extend that and get a win tonight, that will give us some momentum going into the girl boy doubleheader next Tuesday, which we get a, we get to host, and that always. That's always a great night here at Westview with our rivals coming to town. Right, yeah, that is that is fun. Of course, uh, we've added that girls-boys doubleheader thing with uh, Central Noble this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and we used to do West Noble until they, I think it was when the schedules shifted so much yeah. between the girls and the boys, we could no longer do that because we uh, the boys play West Noble after, yes. or when we played that game was after. I mean, the girls are already playing sectional yes. at that time. So, You're right. So yes. we still do Lakeland, Fairfield, and now Central Noble. Uh -huh. um, and Bethany now. We oh, yes, Bethany. and Bethany. And I th I sort of think that the thought was we were going to do that with Elkhart Christian, and that's why we've ended up playing them at the same night. But uh -huh. the girls at one location, boys at the other. But they, they don't have their second gym finished yet, so I think that's why that hasn't happened. Uh-huh. Yeah. So just looking at the girls warming up out here, and based on who's got their jerseys off or the the warm ups off, uh, I would guess it looks like maybe that uh, Janessa is going to get the start. Yeah, it appears that way. So. Uh, really, I think the last three, four, five games she's getting more minutes, and uh, she's she's I think she's getting acclimated after setting out last year with that injury right, earlier. Yeah. I think she's she's starting to. Uh, get acclimated to the high school from eighth grade basketball two years ago right yeah so yeah so, yeah. Yeah, so we're looks like we're both teams are going back to their their huddles for some last minute instructions uh just if you're if you're uh interested at halftime we're going to have uh so the fourth grade girls team playing uh entertaining the crowd so don't walk away at halftime and we see the future of westview girls basketball here and and actually during the Lakeland game my understanding is the fifth and sixth grade teams will be playing 
for uh -huh. the, the girls. So it's hard to believe you see them sitting there, but in five years they could be playing <laughs> varsity as a freshman. You never yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. So it's always it's always fun to see them, and sometimes you can pick out younger sisters or younger brothers when the boys are playing. So, but uh, it's it's good to see the the whole program growing. So. And now the national anthem. My goodness, last night, uh, just thinking about the national anthem, we had uh, Lily Bennett perform for the boys game, and I think that was the most stirring rendition I've ever heard from a high school kid. My goodness, that girl can sing. She sang her heart out. Yes, was, she did. volume, I loved yeah. that. Yeah, yep, I agree. <laughs> All right, starting lineups for tonight for Sturgis, starting in one position, Kayana Ote, uh, the junior. Also, Kinder Smith is a sophomore for the Lady Trojans. Angela Carey, another sophomore. Another guard for the Lady Trojans is Kennedy Finnerman. And in the center for them tonight is Madison Webb, a junior. So starting all underclassmen, the way it looks. I think they've got three senior, no, Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy is a senior, so. For Westview, starting in one guard position tonight is Karis Weinberg. Number one, she's a junior, 5'6". Olivia Bontrager, ball handler for us, 5'1", freshman, number five. Hope Bortner, one of our leading scorers this year, tied right now with Bree Corey, 5'4", senior. And I'm not sure if this is her first start or not, but sophomore Janessa Lehman, it might well be her first start, 5'6", sophomore, number 21, and in the middle, We've got sophomore Bree Corey, 5'10", number 41. So I guess we're starting, what, we got a senior, a junior, a south, south, two sophomores, two sophomores. and a freshman. Yep. So. yep. So yeah, we I guess what we, we dropped a junior and added a, added added a, sophomore. a, added a sophomore. Yep. So. <laughs> All right, so Bree will be jumping against Ote. Seems to be a little bit of a disagreement about who gets what spot there on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. And Sturgis controls the tip. And double dribble called immediately on Kinder Smith as she drove down to the baseline and tried to turn back out. Looks like a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court press. And turn over the other way as Olivia was triple team there, trying to get the ball through there. Quick shot put up there from the side, won't go down for Webb. Smith gets the rebound and kicks it out. And shot put up and no good right inside. Another rebound and still no good. So <laughs> they got, what, three shots three there? Three shots there right off the bat. So Janissa got Oh, Janissa got the rebound and was fouled. I thought maybe they were going to call a jump ball, but Janissa Lehman pulled down that rebound for us. And they're going to put some pressure on again. So long pass down to Janissa. Poked out of her hands. Hmm. And Smith 
Bullet passed out to the other end, trying to hit Carey, Angela Carey, and there's going to be a foul there. It's going to be called on Janessa. Oh, sorry, no, that's on Hope Mortner. Not Mortner. So 35 seconds into the game. A lot of action, lot but of no action. point. <laughs> no points. All right. Ball picked up and now passed across. And driving to the bucket is Madison Webb. She scores the first points of the game for Sturgis. Down the court. There we go. Hope Bortner got. <laughs> wow, she probably didn't get it up high enough. Not enough spin on it for it to climb up and in. Yep. So Bortner answers quickly, so tied 2 2. Smith looking, unloads it to Ote. <coughs> And, oh, and she carried it. Carried it. And she tried to spin around. Got it way up above her shoulder. So a second turnover for them. We played just a little over a minute, and each team has two turnovers. <laughs> and each team has two points as well. Yep. So. <laughs> and just almost had another one. Smith, Smith is quite a go-getter there. Yeah. Sophomore, Kinder Smith, number 12 there number for 12, the Lady yeah. Trojans. Yeah. She's been involved in a lot of that action. Bree Corey comes down as the outlet valve. Janessa now with the ball. Oh, Corey. Oh, nice. Nice <laughs> drive. <laughs> she passed it off, and then she just kept going towards the bucket. She got the ball back and scored. So looks like we're doing a little trapping. Timeout called quickly by okay. Coach Jeremy Buckland to avoid a turnover. So we'll have a, yeah, I think it's just a 30 second timeout. So we'll take yep. a 30 second timeout as well. Are you looking for unlimited high speed internet? With no contract and no credit check. No matter where you live, it's available. Bringing America together. JNR Solutions, Internet Service Provider. Call them at 574 349 7673. Yeah, I saw a double. So yeah, 14. We're back at yep. Westview High School. <laughs> Just looking at the roster here, I think uh, I to talked to the coach. We had one of their girls is on the on the roster twice in two different places, but with the same number, and he said he, she changed her number, and I think they they added her in as a new a new one on number 14, and she used to be number 42, so she's on oh. the on the roster twice. But. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So the Lady Trojans will be triggering it into the right side of their own basket, and working it around the top. So we're in a man to man, and go. Oh, that's a good drove through there. That was Ote. Forced her way through there and got a bucket. Nice drive. Tied it back up. Long pass down to Karras. Now across to Hope, moving the ball around the perimeter nicely. So Hope Bortner left wide open, puts up a three, can't quite get it to go, and pulled out of there by Ote. Tayana Ote, a junior. The only senior on the Sturgis team, punched it inside to Angela Carey, and she put it up and in. Three different Lady Trojans have scored now as they took the lead back, and so they had stolen the ball from us, and then Janessa Lehman got a piece of it again, trying to get it back for us, and on the tie ball situation. Is it a quick alter turnover? Alternating <laughs> possession, yeah, it's one of those half turnovers. Yep, half turnovers. <laughs> Trying to get across the floor. They're certainly putting a lot of pressure on inside nice to Corey. Oh, couldn't quite get it to go, but a foul is going to be called on Angela Corey. That'll be her first team's second, I believe. I, I said, they say Corey, it's Carey. I'm not sure what Carey. I said, but Angela Carey. So Corey will be shooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that one's a little short. 5.18 to go here. Westview down two, four to six. Bree Corey a chance to cut into that lead. And she does. She gets 
her third point of the night. Smith bringing the ball down the floor. Down to Ote, and she tried to punch it inside to, to Webb and missed her. It appears that any time they get to the ball the wing, we're gonna double team and try to create some trapping action. And that was another quick foul on Angela Carey. Hope Bortner went around her. And she didn't get in front of her. She just sort of leaned into her trying to stop her. So she gets called for a second foul, third on the Lady Trojans. And <laughs> she almost picked up another wow. one. <laughs> she reached in there. A little dangerous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'd made a substitution. I thought maybe she was coming out, but it wasn't her coming out. Coming into the lineup for the Lady Trojans was number 24, Riley Carver, a senior. Janessa, nice screen there from Bree. 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 Punch it inside to Bree. Hands it in to Hope. And there's going to be a foul, so the Hope's shot, wide open shot underneath isn't going to count, but that'll be a second on Kayana Ote. Wow, they got two starters with two fouls each. Yeah, so, so another sophomore checks in, Sydney Burr, number 34, as well as Kylie Brooks, a junior, number 22, checks in for the Lady Trojans. So they've had eight, eight girls in there. I believe so. Inside debris, turns and up. Not quite going in for her this time. Pulled out of there by Brooks, and the Trojans are coming back the other way. Smith drives. Oh, and she she perfectly led Burr, Sydney Burr, but Sydney didn't realize the ball was coming. Yeah. <laughs> she would have had a nice open lane to the basket. I hope we stay aggressive the rest of the quarter because any time we get fouled from here on out, we're shooting two free throws the rest of the quarter. Got some numbers if we can get there. Smith caught up with her and poked it loose. <laughs> For the Lady Trojans, she certainly is a dynamo in there. Three point shot put up, missed everything. Karras got the rebound. That shot was put up by Burr. Had a little trouble getting the ball across the line, but worked out all right. <laughs> Olivia punches it inside to Bree. She kicks it back out to Janessa. Back out to Bree out on the wing. Cross court to Karras. And now Olivia <laughs> snuck in there on the baseline. Had about a three-foot shot there. Got it to go. So third Lady Warrior to get in the scoring column. We're up by one, seven to six, 3.33 to go. Burr back to Smith. Smith chucks it down on the baseline to, to oh, that's Burr, sorry. That shot, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure, was that a shot or a pass? In any <laughs> case, we got the ball. I, I think I, it was I, supposed to be a shot, but say, it I, I, awkward. Lo I looked away and I just saw it come down. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, maybe it was a pass. Janessa drives inside, nice jump stop, but had to kick it back out. Oh, Olivia fake, totally faked out her Defender, Bree just took the ball away. Uh, might, have, might have been some contact there the other way, but they let both of them go. Smith quickly the other way, tries to put up the, the layup, can't get it to go. And Coach Ryan wants to talk things over. So 7-6, Westview's up by one, 2.48 to go here in the first period on LaguanaMedia.com. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. And we're back, so Westby will have the ball. Need to go the length of the court. Uh, looks like they're gonna apply pressure again. 
Yeah, they so we really have a, a two girls down here if, on, on a long pass. If yeah, I think they kind of yeah. call it a diamond and one, but yeah, it's a one, two, one, one. So if we and can keep uh, them spread out down here and yeah. be looking for that, the girl down here can only guard one of them. But mm -hmm. Hope Bortner drives the line, oh, nice. puts it up, can't get it to go. Bree gets the rebound, corrals it up and can't get it to go. And Karras chases it down this time for Westview. So a couple offensive boards for us. We'll get another chance to set it up. Yes, that's the way to attack the uh, attack their glass. That's great. Gives us another opportunity. Karras on the right wing, across to. Olivia puts up a three, can't get it to go. Smith with the rebound. And she comes flying back the other way. Inside to Webb. Now down to down to Brooks. And Bree got the rebound, but when she passed it off, oh, stolen nice by Brooks, and she put it up and in. Now we're down by one, eight to seven. Karras. Had the ball knocked loose there by Burr and ended up losing it off her knee. Looks like maybe Burr had something, is pr either protecting her nose or had something happen in her nose. She's wearing some kind of protective hmm. tape on her nose. So it looks like football players do. It makes them look, yeah. it makes them look mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a psychological thing. Olivia's going to be called for a foul from behind there, trying to poke the ball loose. She needs some smudge under her eyes yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Olivia picks up her first two on Westview now. Janessa comes back in. Okay. I guess I missed it when JJ came in. So JJ Whetstone in there. Karras comes out. And back into the lineup for, for the uh, Lady... Trojans, or in for the first time, is Gabriel Netke, the junior. Okay. Working it back out to Smith, and now three-pointer put up, no good, and JJ got the rebound. Shot put up by Burr. Hope Bortner puts up a three, can't get it to go. Janessa Lehman gets the rebound, and working it around the perimeter quickly. Now Janessa drives inside, kicks it out to JJ. JJ is going to put up the three. Can't get it to go, and this time Smith corrals it for the Lady Trojans, and she's looking down the floor. Across to Carver, and now back to Smith. She put up a three, can't get it to go, and Janessa Lehman gets the rebound. And they are, oh, watch out behind. Uh oh. Yep. From behind. Yeah, Smith, <laughs> she's got wheels. That's, she's done it twice now <laughs> where she's come up from behind and poked it loose into yep. a teammate's hand. One more, one more. So, cr pass down to Brooks. Underneath, she tried to get it through the lane, but Bree Corey <laughs> kicks it out of bounds. So, Karras coming in, going to give Olivia a breather. So, 14.3 seconds to go. and. Sturgis inbounding underneath their own basket. Inside to, to Smith, but Bree Corey picked it up. Karras going all the way to the other end. And drew the foul. Yeah, she drew the foul. There were two girls there. One of them might have blocked her, but when there's two, it's awfully hard for both of them to be clean. It's going to be called on Burr. And so Weinberg, chance to tie it up and or put us in the lead if she can make one or two of these. With 7.9 seconds to go. Ties it up, her first points of the night. Audrey Taylor checks in now for Bree Corey. Second shot up, off the back of the rim. And Weinberg gets it back. She's got to shoot it. I don't think, and uh, uh, shot <laughs> forced up there by Audrey. She didn't have much time, but at least we got the shot off. So yep. all tied up after, it's 8-8 eight, eight after 8. We'll be back <laughs> in 60 seconds for second quarter action here at Westview High School on laguanamedia.com. 
Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, class coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Here's a secret the big box stores don't want you to know. Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint, and more. Emma Warehouse is located six miles west of LaGrange in downtown Emma. Call 260-593-2769 for more information. And we're back. Both teams still discussing things, getting ready for the second quarter of action here. Been a lot of action. Yeah. Uh, eight points apiece. Westview's attempted five threes with no success. They've attempted three with no success. We've got 11 rebounds already in one quarter. At that pace, we're going to have over 40. <laughs> 40 rebounds. They've had seven, so yeah. a lot of action. Six well, turnovers for Westview and five for Sturgis at this point. Okay, so a lot of stats in all kinds of categories. Smith, oh, no, that's, oh, nice. Poked away there by Karras, but we couldn't quite chase it down into the corner, so it'll be retained by the Trojans. A little bit of discussion about where the, uh, it, it has to be where the ball went out. So it's right down in the corner. Be kind of a tough place to inbound it. Yeah. So Smith drives right. And almost picked off. Working around the perimeter. Carver now, back to Smith. She drives the left side and she lost it. I think, yeah, yep. I think she just lost it. And pressure being applied by the Lady Trojans again. Hope Bortner gets it. Trying to quickly get down the court. So, so yeah, if you can get out of that initial trap, keep moving it, then mm -hmm. it's probably okay. Hope Bortner, nice job driving inside. Can't get it to go. Bree Corey got the rebound, but when she tried down, no, oh, no, it wasn't Bree. Who was in there? Bree's not even in the game. <laughs> Maybe it was Audrey. Was that Taylor, I think. Yeah, yes. Audrey Taylor yeah. Yep. Had, had gotten the rebound. And she had. Oh, she walked. <laughs> That's going to be called a net key. Coming back in for the Lady Trojans, Madison Webb and Kennedy Finnerman, two of the starters. So I think, yeah, we were, I was looking at that during the break. I think they've played nine girls on the, uh, on the Sturgis side, we've had uh -huh. seven, I think. Now working it down to the perimeter, or down to the corner, I should say. Hope with it, now to Janessa. Back out to Hope. Audrey Taylor down on the left baseline. Now Karras up top, drives inside. Gonna pull it back out. Olivia drives and pulls back out. Oh, Janessa, nice drive. Nice, nice drive. <laughs> Got it in up and in with the right hand. So Lehman scores her first points of the night. Showed a lot of patience, and we finally got a high percentage shot. And ball knocked out of bounds. Sturgis will retain possession. So Bree comes back in, comes in for Audrey, and now Yuri Villaforte comes in, a senior for the Sturgis Trojans. I think he's had everybody on his bench have in the some game. playing time in the game now, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and almost have a turnover. Olivia, nice nice job looking ahead and seeing where she was going to pass that. Picked off the, the pass and gets fouled as she goes in for the layup. Foul's going to be called on Finnerman. And, of course, fouls start over again each quarter, so that's their first but we are shooting. So Olivia with a bucket already tonight gets a chance to add to that and she does. 
three points now for Olivia. This is our sixth attempt. Uh, Sturgis has yet to get to the line tonight. First two times we were at the line, we made one of two. Let's see if we can get both of them. Yep. <laughs> she, <laughs> she used all of the rim there, bounced it up really high. And I think that's our biggest lead of the night. So we're up four right now, 12 to eight. Outscored them four nothing so far here in the second quarter. Finnerman down to Yuri, passes across and Karras stole it. He only has Finnerman to go around. She gets around her, puts it up and in. So Weinberg with three now, 14 to eight. Westview up by six. Down to Finnerman, back to Smith, working it around the perimeter. He's going to have to kick it out to Carver. Now down to Yuri and Yuri Another threw turnover. it away and Karras is back to the other end. Smith there, and this time, this time Karras is a left-handed layup, puts it up and in, and all of a sudden we've scored eight points in the first two and a half minutes of the second quarter. So we're up 16 to eight and Sturgis wants to talk things over. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialist will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Height Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months, and save up to $1,400. And we're back. we got Bree, Corey, JJ Whetstone, uh, Olivia Bontrager, Karis Weinberg, and Janessa Lehman out there for Westview. And We've got a lot of layups here this yeah, quarter yeah. Right, off of turnovers, which is giving us a nice little boost here if we can just keep the momentum going. Yeah, Smith picked up her dribble, pokes it inside, and kicked it back out. Three attempt put up there by, by Carver and pulled out of there by Janessa Lehman, the rebound. So it looks like we're looking inside. Pokes it inside debris. Oh, she she changed her mind at the last minute. She, yep. she was going to go up for the shot, and Janessa was not expecting that pass. So turnover Westview. They immediately double teamed her that time. I don't know if they've if that was a plan early on or if they just it was an instinct. But uh, teams are starting to do that. The scouting gets out there. Yeah. She's pretty <laughs> yeah pretty well. good around the block. Yeah. Three-point shot from the corner, put up and in this time by Burr. So the first three from either team. 16-11, Westview still up five. Bond trigger quickly down across the half court line. So they're still in a zone. Fortner trying to get inside. Whetstone takes a three, can't get it to go. Poked, <laughs> poked loose by Bortner right into Bree Corey's hands. Uh, got an offensive board, we'll take that. Karras setting things back up for us. Inside, Debris, no, but only one there to stop her. Oh. Can't get it to go. And there, she rebound. gets it back, <laughs> gets it back up. I think JJ was in there helping poke it loose again, so Bree had another chance at it. So a second offensive board on that trip down the floor and ended up with two points. Moving the ball around the perimeter. And three-point shot taken from about two feet behind the line, that time by Carver. 
So they've hit two threes this quarter. And back within four. Inside debris, turns, puts it up, no call. They say they did tip it though, so Westview will retain possession and Olivia Bond triggered it, triggered it in on the right side. Inside debris, puts it up, again block, no, no call. Burr gets the ball, bringing it down the floor. Off to Finnegan. She drives all the way in, can't get the rebound to go. Olivia Bontrager with, the, <laughs> with the, the rebound, and as she came down the floor, it got knocked away from her right back into the hands of Karras, who was running behind her. Hope Bortner corrals the ball, gets things set up again. So Hope Bortner left wide open for a three, off the back of the iron, can't get it to go, and. Uh, we had the, <laughs> they had the ball, we had the ball, they had the ball. And they get to the other end, can't get the rebound to go, but we don't have anybody there to rebound. And mm -hmm. I think they got another offensive board. And I'm not sure, Bree was in front of her, JJ was behind her, I'm not sure who they're gonna call it on. Yeah, that's gonna be on JJ. Whetstone. Audrey Taylor checks in for Bree giving up some height there when she comes out. So, did a nice job getting open there. Webb went right at the bucket and got a shot up. Couldn't get it to go, but she'll get to shoot a couple. As yeah. J, was that JJ? No, that was called on Taylor. Taylor, yeah. Yeah, that was, Dan. That was a nice set play under the basket there. She had made a nice basket that that's their first attempt from the line am I so, correct so on yeah that? so they're 100 percent from the line right now yep <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah they they uh sturgis still hasn't scored any two point buckets here in the second quarter they've hit a couple threes and now a couple ones yeah she hits both her free throws and all of a sudden they're back within two had a 10 point lead Yeah, we're looking inside, but we don't have Bree in there to, I don't know if anybody else is as comfortable in there, and the ball just stripped away, and all the way to the other end, puts it up and in, and is fouled, was Sydney Burr, sophomore, and they do have a two-point bucket now. Yep. And, yeah, so after we were up, now I guess we never had a, we never had a 10-point lead, we had an eight-point lead. So we were up 18 to 11, or 16 to eight, and now it's 18 all, and still is. But the rebound pulled out of there by Sturgis, but weren't able to convert on it, and Janessa Lehman gets the rebound for Westview. Audrey Taylor back out to Olivia. Hope Bortner, she was open again, passes up the three. Janessa. Harris and going on around Olivia and then Hope. Hope spinning around, is gonna bring it back out. Janessa has it on the left side, she's driving. Kicks it down to Karras. Karras gonna drive inside. There you go. It, puts it up. Didn't get it to go, but a foul called. Only the second on them for the half, or for the quarter. But that's Finnerman called for that, her second, team second. And Karras at the line to shoot. Some free throws, she's one of two earlier. So Karras up to six points now. As we just edge back out in front of the Trojans, 19 to 18, 120 to go here in the half. Second shot is no good and have a whole bunch of Trojans trying to uh, get the ball and I think we ended up with a foul at the end. It's gonna be called on Karras. So, so 1.14 to go. Lady Trojans down one, but with the ball. Across to Carver, down the baseline to 
Webb inside. Got Smith wide open, but uh, Bree had knocked, knocked her shot away, so it didn't go in. And then uh, Smith and Hope both got a piece of the rebound. So on the alternating possession, we get the ball. That was a nice block by Bree out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. It looked like a, a two two foot bunny basket for him. Yeah. So 52 seconds to go. Karras dribbles it back out of trouble. Bree's calling for it inside. Now Hope gets it to her. Now she kicks it back out. Back into Bree. And she goes down with it and tried to unload it so she wouldn't be called for a travel, but stolen by, by Smith and Montrager came up from behind, knocked the ball loose, but nobody there to grab it for her. So went out the end. Good hustle by uh, Bontrager. Yeah. Carver triggering it in, into Smith. Passes it in, and Webb puts it up. Can't get it to go, but Carver got the rebound and put it back up. Couldn't get it to go either, but she's going to get to shoot a couple free throws, and the foul's going to be called on Janissa Lehman. So, am I right here, Randy? It looks like two, four, six. We have six fouls called on Westy so far. Nobody has more than one. Oh, actually, I guess uh, Olivia. Andre, Olivia does have two. I must have missed that. First foul, uh, free throw missed by Carver. Second one is good. So all tied up again with 19.8 seconds to go in the first half. Westy ball. Looking inside, can't get it there. Four seconds, Olivia off to Janessa. She puts up a shot to the left side, can't get it to go. So 19-19, after 16 minutes, all tied up. We'll be back with halftime stats in two minutes. Pizza Depot on South Jefferson Street in Millersburg features delicious pizza and breadsticks, along with fresh salads. Dine-in, carry-out, and delivery are all available at Pizza Depot. Pizza Depot, 104 South Jefferson Street in Millersburg. 574-642-4229. Shipshe Automotive Service provides five-star auto repair services in the Shipshewana area. See Shipshe Automotive's professional auto repair technicians for advanced diagnostics for your vehicle. From suspension and alignment to AC repair, brakes, and general maintenance with Shipshe Automotive Service, you gain a partner you can trust with all your auto repair needs. Shipshe Automotive Service also provides 24-hour towing service. That's Shipshe Automotive Service, 260-768-7119. Some see a student-athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn. Quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. And we're back at Westview, <laughs> watching the uh, fourth grade girls out here playing. The one that lost her shoe there is Eric Kostetler's. Oh, okay. So, yeah, tonight's half game show brought to you by Pizza <laughs> Depot in Millersburg, featuring chicken fajita pizza as their December pizza of the month. And we'll let you enjoy watching the girls playing out there as Randy gives us some stats for the first half. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, we'll start out with uh, Westview, first of all. Each team with 19 here at halftime, eight each in the first quarter and 11 each in the second quarter. About as even as you can get. 
Uh, for the Warriors, uh, pretty balanced scoring here. Karis Weinberg has two field goals, two for four at the line for six. Uh, Olivia Bontrager has a basket and two for two at the line for four. Hope Bordner has a basket for two points. Yanissa Lehman a basket for two. And Bree Corey has two baskets, one for two at the line for a grand total of five points. And uh, for Sturgis, We'll get to those totals. Uh, Yana Ote has a basket for two points. Uh, Angela Carey has one basket for a total of two points. Kylie Brooks, a basket for two. Uh, Rale Carver has a three-pointer, one for two at the line for a total of four points. Sydney Burr has a, a three-pointer, a two, a two-pointer for five, and rounding out the scoring is Madison Webb with a basket, two for two at the line for four. I have uh, Sturgis a total of three for five at the free throw line. And for the Lady Warriors, they have hit a total of five free throws out of eight attempts. So 63% for us, 60% for, for them. So yeah. Yeah, but we've been there more often than they have. They've had more girls. They've had more girls scoring than we have. I just noticed now, looking at the uh, points scored for Westview, we have no bench points at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, I didn't mark their starters. So, but they've had six girls score. So obviously, they have some bench points at least. And actually, I know Finnerman had started. She hasn't scored. So at least two of those. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right, Dan. In fact, they have 11, 11 non-starters points. Okay, uh, so 11 of their 19 points coming from non-starters. Yeah, that's pretty so, yeah, impressive. He's been, he's been playing, I think he's played his entire bench, mm -hmm. and uh, so that that is impressive. Six of them have scored, and you say 11, 11 over half of their points have come from off the bench. So. Yeah. As far as uh, the rest of the stats here, I have... Uh, Westview for 18 rebounds, Sturgis for 13, turnovers Westview 10, Sturgis 10. Shooting, uh, again, these aren't official, but I have Westview 8 for 16 from two-point range, which is 50%. 0 for 7 for three-point, which is, we know what that is. Yep, <laughs> and if you add the two together, so 8 of 23, 8 of 24 would be 33%. 33 overall, so yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, so it's uh, a little higher than that. Uh huh. So maybe 35, 36 percent. Anyway, yeah. Yep. For uh, Sturgis, I have five for 16 from uh, from two point range and two for six for from three. So they do have two three pointers. That would be what seven for 22, a little under 33 percent, I guess. And, and yeah, seven for overall. 22, and we're eight for 23. So. Mm -hmm. Not not too too far different. But I tell uh, you, it's pretty even yeah. when you look at everything. Yeah. Uh, so stat wise, turnover. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure the. Uh, yeah. Obviously, ha not having Morgan here makes a difference. Uh, yeah. Having one more really solid player, I mean, does give Janessa a, a chance to step up, which I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Giving somebody else a chance to start. Actually, I, do you know it, when they played at Central Noble who had filled in for Olivia? I uh, don't know who started that game in her place. No, I that, don't. Is that when? Might see, have just been. Uh, see, Karis had Weinberg. Had, yeah, Karis had been starting. I don't yeah, think so. Probably. So that's probably what they did. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've uh, we've looked good in spurts tonight. I, we had when we built that eight-point lead there at one time. Sturgis had about three or four possessions where they pretty much turned it over and we converted those into some easy baskets. Right, uh, yeah. And uh, so that gave us a boost, but you give you give Sturgis credit, they came storming back and they hit two threes that kind of jump-started them back, back into the game. Right, yeah, uh, we had yeah we had scored the last point of the first quarter on a free throw and then we scored the next eight points uh, to start the second quarter. So we were up 16 to eight and then, mm -hmm. and then we got out 11 to, to three to finish out the quarter. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I think uh, I like what they're doing with punching it inside for uh, free. And uh, mm -hmm. as we talked about Karis driving inside and 
looks like uh, Janessa has been driving inside <laughs> some, but she's not. She's she's going in and then kicking it back out. So yeah. it seems like the ball movement's okay. Yeah. But we're just uh, yeah yeah. Uh, it would it would be nice if we get a couple of those three pointers to fall. I think last night. I recall the the boys didn't score any threes the first half. Maybe they had one. Maybe no, I don't think they, any. They didn't have any in the Before first the half. Before the third quarter, they came out and hit. A, they what? hit. They hit three of them in the, uh, the third quarter yeah. and one in the fourth. So, so. It, it was their lowest number of threes in a game so far uh -huh. this season. Let's uh, hope the girls can do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, so. uh, I remember Thursday we talked about at halftime we had 25 points and Hope didn't score. Now tonight we have 19 and she only has two. So I'm hoping that uh, Thursday night, I think she had seven the second half. So I'm Yeah, I think that's right. So let's hope so she can maybe get untracked a little bit. Uh, she had a couple really nice drives. Uh, she just wasn't able to finish them, but uh, hopefully she can step up and uh, help everybody else chip in and uh, we can kind of re regroup and take the lead again here as the third quarter begins. Yeah. Well, I, why don't we take another quick break here? Uh, Wesley's not come out of the huddle yet, out of the locker room yet. So we'll take a one minute timeout and then we'll be back and getting ready for second half action here on laguanamedia.com. $30 Hear the calls of the auctioneers at the Shepshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Feel the thrill as six to nine auctioneers showcase a variety of antiques, collectibles, treasures, and more. Whether in search of a unique find or something for your next DIY project, you'll find it at the Shepshawana Auction. And it's different every week. Bid on thousands of items from pickers from all over. To learn how to buy or sell, visit ShepshawanaTradingPlace.com. Going once, twice, sold on the best deals at the Shepshawana Antique Auction. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street, Topeka. Mouth-watering home-cooked goodness, all in a friendly down-home atmosphere among friends and neighbors. Different daily specials, all-you-can-eat fish twice a week. Scrumptious buffets featuring our fried chicken. And then finish it off with a slice of fresh-baked pie. Eat in our large dining room or carry out at 260-593-2988 and now offering delivery within 10 miles of Topeka. And we're back here at Westview High School. Both teams out on the floor now. So always interesting to see what the, uh, the coaches talk about at halftime. And then always, I always like to see if I can figure out what they talk about. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's pretty obvious, <laughs> like they're trying to push it to a certain player or, you know, they're, uh -huh. and sometimes it's not quite so obvious, but uh, right. I always like to see if I can figure that out. Mm -hmm. So both, both teams hitting their huddles now and getting ready for second Second half action, the arrows pointing to Sturgis, but I don't know, sometimes they switch that over already, so I'm not sure if that's where it'll be after the ball's inbounded or if that's yeah. <laughs> actually what's. We'll soon know. It looks like it looks like the, they're pointing towards the Westview end, so. No, I guess Sturg Sturgis is gonna have the, the ball first. The ref indi indicated Sturgis, I believe, yeah. I thought they were pointing, pointing to our left, but but they're actually going to be going the other way. So yep, they have a, a nice stack set up with nobody guarding them. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Finnerman inbounds it, gets it to Smith, their ball handler, a sophomore, and we're off back to Finnerman. She drives in all the way in, can't get it to go, a rebound. Pulled down out of there by Ote, and she went back up but couldn't get it to go, and it went out of bounds. So Westview will be triggering it in, and they're going to be applying pressure again. Oh, my. And stolen right inside by Ote. She got her own rebound, put it back up, couldn't get it to go, but she'll go to the line. We saw that happen in the JV game where... They just grab the ball as soon as they as yeah. we try to throw them away. I don't know if we need to back off the line a little bit when we're <laughs> inbounding or or what. Yeah. That yeah, that was really, it seems like we are. We're right on the line almost when we're uh, inbounding. Yeah, so Janessa Lehman called for her second foul, and Ote gets her third point of the night as the Lady Trojans back up by one. She takes her second shot and missed everything. That should be a violation, I believe, yep. So hits the first one and missed everything on the yeah. second. 
One extreme to the other. Yeah, so <laughs> Janessa gets it into Karras. And going down the floor, quickly down the floor, I like that. Once we get through it, it's again, it's like if we can get through that first trap or maybe the second one, get uh -huh. it reversed and we can go flying down the floor. Hope all the way in, can't get it to go. Pulled out of there by Madison Webb. And the Lady Trojans coming back the other way. Shot put up, can't get it to go. I think uh, Carey had gotten that rebound and was that Hope? Yeah, That's Hope Ortner gets Ortner called foul, foul, foul from behind. So that's her second, team second. Kennedy Finnerman inbounding for the Lady Trojans. Gets it to Smith. She's going to take it all the way back out top. And now to Ote. Kicks it down. Quick shot put up from the sideline by Webb. Gets it to go. 22-19. Almost stolen by Smith, but when she threw it back in, it went right into our hands. Nice pass inside. As a nice Breed pass. Corey puts it up and in. Seven for Breed. 21-22. Westby still down one. Smith to bring the ball down the floor for the Lady Trojans. Now down to Kennedy Finnerman. Pushes it down to Carey and tried to do a pass across the lane and Hope Bortner said, I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Janessa drives, gets it into. Corey and she loses it. Ote pulls it out of there, all the way to the other end, puts it up and in. So uh, feels like the action's a little faster than it had been the first half, maybe. It is. Hope all the way down. Can't get it to go again. She's had a couple shots trying to put it in there, and Ote going the other end. And My same goodness. shot. She just throws it up there, gets it to go in. And I'm not sure what the call is. Okay, I wondered about that. So Ote had hit the floor, and as we were trying to inbound it, she tapped the ball as she came back in. So she touched it out of bounds in our hands. So that's a technical mm -hmm. violation. And so that will put Hope Mortner at the line to shoot. Shoot a couple. So Ote getting in all kinds of action. She is. A lot of scoring, and now she just uh, sort of a mental error there. She, she, I'm sure she knew she can't touch the ball there, but she just she did. So Hope Bortner hits the first one, 22-26. Now still chasing four. She'll get a second one, and then we'll get the ball. <coughs> and she hits them both. Maybe that will help jumpstart Hope. Uh, I noticed, I wonder if that was a point of emphasis, Dan, you always talked about that. She had two drives, hard drives. Oh, that's right. So that I think maybe <laughs> they're trying to get her to attack the basket. Uh -huh. uh, we'll see. I don't know. Bree takes a shot from just beyond the three point, <laughs> uh, the, the free throw line, banks it in. Nine for Bree, 25-26, we're back within one. Carver loses the ball, but picked up by Kennedy Finnerman. She passes it underneath and put up and no good by uh, Carey and as we tried to get it out of there, down the other end, Hope Bortner gets it out to Janessa at the top of the key, <laughs> having a little trouble getting a hold of the ball. <laughs> and now we got a tie up situation, looks like it's gonna be Westview ball. That's one of those where we got it back but we gave up half a turnover. Yeah. Into Janessa, now down to Bree on the right side, and Smith grabs a piece of it. Looks like we're still having a little trouble getting a hold of the ball cleanly. Janessa back out to Hope Bortner, now to Olivia. Olivia down to Kara, she drives. Oh, that was a beautiful right. pass to Bree, but it went right between her legs, and I think it's still going to be Westview ball. She probably couldn't have done that if she would have tried. <laughs> <laughs> JJ Whetstone checking in for Westview, coming in for Bree. <laughs> so Olivia to trigger it in. Looks like she might be back a little further off yeah. the line than what they had been earlier. Lobs it in to Hope. 
Now to Karras, going to bring it to the top of the key. Janessa drives all the way in, can't get it to go. Pulled out of there by Webb for the Lady Trojans and Smith quickly brings it back down the other way. Down to Carver and now Webb, she lost it, got it back, couldn't get it, got her own rebound, put it back up and in. 28-25, back down by three. Westview with four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. So Janessa looking inside, gonna have to settle. For, oh no, she does take it in to Hope. Hope drives, and it was knocked, knocked away by, uh, by Smith again. And that's, so that so this, yeah, that's the second time the, uh, it's that second half a turnover. Yeah, the so second now, half. So now, now it is a turnover because it was our ball and we lost it. Yep. Kind of comes back to haunt us the second time. Yep. <coughs> so Smith brings it down with Karras on her. Burr, Carver, look it inside, back to. Oh, she, I thought she was going to take the shot, but it went into Smith. She couldn't get it to go. And tie-up called. All right, we, I'll take it when they have the ball, and then we cause a tie-up. <laughs> I like those half yeah. turnovers way better. <laughs> and no pressure. They're just going to let us bring it down. <laughs> it changes things a little bit when we don't have Bree in there in the middle. It does. Sort of lose that. Scoring that threat, threat yes. inside. Mm -hmm. uh, looking inside, Karras gonna drive. Looks like they're being very patient. A long ways out now. Hopes. Okay, I thought maybe she's gonna try to drive inside. So they're still in a man-to-man. Yeah. So Olivia kicks it back out. Now Karras drives, gets it to JJ. Hope kicks it out to Janessa, and now to Olivia. Set it back up. It looks like we're trying to spread them out and get some driving lanes. Yeah. Hope out to Olivia. So are we just trying to kill some clock while Bree's on the bench, maybe? Karras. Karras got fouled as she went in there. That might be on Smith. Yep, that's going to be called on Kinder Smith, their point guard. Her first. I think that's only the second on them this half. So Finnig Finnerman back in, as is Brooks, Kylie Brooks for the Lady Trojans. Hope clear on the right side. All spread out again. Underneath the JJ. Gonna have to dribble it. Now she gets it to, trying to get it to Hope. She gets it into Janessa. Cross court pass to Olivia, and she's stuck underneath, but she gets it out to Karras, and Smith's going to get called this time. Oh, yeah, again. Yep, two quick ones on their point guard. Karras going to trigger it in right in front of her bench. And Olivia brings it down. So 2.21 to go making Sturgis play a lot of defense right now. Drives inside. Yeah, being very patient here. Olivia drives inside, gives it to JJ, and now she's gonna get a layup and got it to go. go. Whetstone scores. 27-28, that's, that's the perfect outcome of a long offensive series like yep. that, isn't it? Make them, <laughs> make them play defense for a long time and then score on them. Underneath, cross court pass to Smith, and she kicks it out to Burr. She gets it underneath, sorry, to Webb. Webb puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound by Olivia Bontrager, and Janessa Lehman has the ball. Down to Mortner. She drives inside and tipped out of bounds by Webb. Will retain possession, be triggering it in underneath her own basket. With one and a half minutes to go, Westview down by one. 27-28, it's been a close game the whole night. Inside, Smith knocks it out of bounds. She is just involved in everything. <laughs> yes, she I is. I like the way she plays. She's a dynamo out she there. She is. 
All right, so coming Energy. back in, yeah, Angela Carey comes back in for the Lady Trojans as well as Carver, I think, just came back in. Back to the same thing, driving in, kicking out. Oh, clock just went off for a second, but it came back on. 1.13 to go. Hope drives the baseline. Back out to Janessa. Now she's going to drive, and a foul is going to be called as she drove. It might be on Burr. Yep, Sydney Burr. Her second four on the Lady Trojans now, and we've got uh, Kiana Ote coming back in. Burr's going to take a seat. <coughs> a minute to go. They're just over a minute. I wonder if they have Ote out there for defense. She's got quick feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's out there to... Karras drives, loses it, and we got another one of those jump ball situations where it was ours to start with, and they get it. So 46.8 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Sturgis up by one with the ball. Quickly down to Kiana Ote, and she lost it right into Hope Mortner's hands. Tries to throw it long. Karras got it somehow. Smith was there. Shot. Karras got it to go up and in. Eight points for Karras. We retain, uh, regain the lead, 29-28, with just under half a minute to go. And JJ almost picked up another pass by, uh, long pass by Smith. Carver to inbound it, gets it to Smith, and and uh, <laughs> that time Karras knocks it out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks, it looks like she just stood there. Just, yeah, just okay. kind of, okay. Okay, I'll <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> it might be getting a little winded here. <laughs> Kennedy Finneran. Right over to Riley Carver. Now double team. Now back to Finnerman. Over to Smith. Uh, back into Finnerman underneath. She tried to get an inbound pass and picked out of there by Westview. We got five seconds to go. And Karras lost it. And now we lost it. <laughs> well, it's the first quarter that hasn't ended up in a tie, and the good news is Westview up by one, 29-28 with eight minutes to go. We'll be back with the last quarter of action here on LaguanaMedia.com in 60 seconds. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. And we're back. So we have some bench points now, Randy. Yeah. We got two from J.J. Weston. J.J., yeah. <laughs> Interesting, uh, that quarter, uh, after both teams combined to shoot 13 threes the first half, I didn't see any threes attempted by either team in that quarter. We kind of slowed it up and Well, and we were, were looking to push inside. Yeah. Looked like that's, so yeah, I'm guessing that must be one of the things Ryan talked about. Yeah. I mean, you had talked specifically, we could see that with Hope driving inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Breeze back in. I think we're back to our original starting lineup, but we're, st we're still spread out like we had been. But now inside Debris. And she tries to pass it across to Olivia, but Smith picks it up, and she's off to the races at the other end. Kicks it to Ote, and now Carver takes a three. Can't get it to go. And, boy, Ote's got some springs in those legs. But uh, <laughs> Hope Mortner ended up with the rebound. 
She can jump. Yes, <laughs> she was skying. <laughs> yeah. She almost knocked it in just trying to get to oh. it. Karras goes up, can't get it to go. Bree gets the rebound, gets it there. back, puts it back up. So two offensive boards for Bree Corey. She's in the double digits now, 11 points for, for her. Westview up 31-28. Carver with the ball. Down to Finnerman. Now Ote back to Finnerman. And Janessa poked it loose, stole the ball. Karras. Karras going to throw it back out to Hope. Hope's going to set it up. Trying to get it inside to, to Bree. Oh, nice. nice. Nice give and go. And her... Her uh, shot wouldn't go. We're having the same trouble they were. We can't get the My goodness. get the, the bunnies to go. So Hope's going to try a three instead, and that one's not going to go either. And that time pulled out of there by Burr for the Lady Trojans, and she's coming the other way. And we stole the ball back. Karras trying to control the ball. Yep. <laughs> she was running with it. It yep. looked like she never quite got the dribble under control. So we got Webb and Burr back in for the Lady Trojans, two of their taller players, two of their starters. Actually, yeah, they're almost back to their starting lineup. I think Carver's the only one that's not a starter that's out there right now. Smith to Carver, down to Ote. She puts up a three long, missed it so badly we didn't have a chance at the rebound. <laughs> yeah. Sturgis got the ball back. That time Janessa got her hand on the intended pass, knocked it out of bounds. So Sturgis will be inbounding from in front of their own bench. Carver to Ote, back to Smith at the top of the key, hands it off to Ote, back to Smith at the top again. Looking inside, got it into Webb and she lost it. And the ball still loose, Burr has it. Ooh. Oh, and they're gonna call Olivia for a foul. A little surprised they didn't call one earlier. I mean, yeah. with, with that much action, a lot of times they'll call a foul. But so Olivia picks up her third, and that's our first for the fourth quarter. Ote drives, dribbled it off her toes, and rolled it right to Burr. Burr takes a 10 footer, hit nothing, but got it <laughs> <laughs> pulled out of there by Webb. Turned out to be an okay play for them as she scored and then we turned it over. So 30-31, we're still up by one, but we've given it back to them right underneath their own basket. So having a little trouble with the pressure right now again. Need some clean passes to get through. Carver having a little trouble, finally gets it out to Smith. She has to chase it down almost into the backcourt. Down to Webb on the right baseline. The arc drives in, puts up the shot. Bree's going to be called for the foul, I believe. That's her first. Two, yep. two now on Westview, and that'll put Madison Webb, a junior, at the line to shoot a couple. She's two for two so far tonight. She's got ten points. And the first shot off the back of the iron. And Coach Yoder says, let's talk things over. Let's ice her at the line a little bit. Yep. <laughs> so we'll take a 30-second timeout as well. Host your next conference or retreat in the heart of Amish country at the Farmstead Inn and Conference Center in Shipshawana. Our beautiful Amish-inspired inn is within walking distance to downtown shopping, theater, and delicious food. The perfect setting for any event. Located across from the famous Shipshawana auction, where every Wednesday at 9 a.m. you can find deals on furniture, antiques, primitives, art, glassware, tools, architectural salvage, and so much more. Plan the perfect getaway. Visit ShipshawanaTradingPlace.com. And we're back. Well, Dan, I think this is this is the kind of game that so far this year we have not been able to finish strong. We've been in games at this point, but let's hope tonight we can turn the corner. Five minutes to go, we're up one. Yeah. Uh, so against Fremont the other night, I think with just over two minutes to go, we were up one and ended up losing by seven or eight. Uh, yeah. I think that happened at Elkhart Christian. Elkhart Christian, yeah. Yep. So just need a finish here. She gets that second one to drop. So we're all tied up again with 5.17 to go. And trying to work our way through the pressure here. And a 
Olivia down to Karras. Lobs it inside to Bree. Puts it up, got it to go. Oh, nice feed. Yep. Bree up to 13. We're back up by two. 33-31. Looks like we're trapping. There's a lot of running for Karras up at the top. Inside to Missed shot by Burr, and Janessa's going all the way to the other end. She might have taken an extra yeah, little hop <laughs> there, but no call. And Ote got the rebound, and Janessa tried to help her hold it. They're going to call her for a foul instead. So that's going to be on Lehman. I think maybe her third. Three on Westview for the quarter as well. <coughs> Four thirty-six to go. Hanging on to a two-point lead. Down to Carver. Lobs it inside to Smith. She puts it up, can't get it to go. Comes out long, Carver chases it down, and now Burr's gonna take a three. No good, and Ote came in there. Got the board, put it up and in. All tied up again. A lot of pressure again, almost a turnover. Will retain possession. Still have almost the length of the floor to go. Janessa is going to inbound it. Gets it in debris, and now Karras is going to quickly get it down to the other end. She's going to pull it back out. Janessa gets it to Olivia. So just under four minutes to go. All tied up. Karras drives, kicks it out to Hope. Now she's going to drive, kick it out to Olivia. Ote popped out there quickly. The Bree, the Bree, oh, Bree got the ball and was trying to go up, and instead of a, normally in a situation like that, oh, wow. I always just assumed because they almost always <laughs> went with the foul. They when, might always when, do. I guess this ref thought he saw his before the foul occur, but you're right. Usually they go with yeah, the foul. Yeah. So that half turnover cost us there. So they Sturt just got the ball on the alternating possession. They called a jump ball. One official did. The other one would call a foul. And... Okay, well, now we just had nope. another call overturned on us. <laughs> yeah. I think that was the right call, though. I think it was tipped by Janessa. Or, yeah, I think it was Janessa out there. Carver triggers it in from the corner, gets it into Ote. She's going to dribble it out front to Burr. Lobs it to Webb. Lobs it back into Burr. She tries to throw it across to Carver. Knocked out of bounds by Westview. 3.09 to go, still tied up. Sturgis gonna have to inbound again on their own end line. Carver gets it to Smith. Smith drives, hands it off to Carver. Almost stolen by Hope, back to Smith. And back to Carver. Two are just playing catch, <laughs> back and forth, back to Smith. Now to Webb, she's gonna drive and and Janessa reached in there and knocked it loose. Hope Bortner ended up with the ball. And now we ended up turning it right back over. Pass down to Ote. That time a little wild, but coming along to do the cleanup duties was Webb. She scores and Sturgis up by two, 35-33. Karras all the way in, up and in. Nice scoop, tied it right back up. 35-35, 2.28 to go. And Westview's going to call a timeout, so we'll take a 60-second break as well. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom-made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture, located just south of U.S. Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana, family owned and operated since 1989. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Here's a secret the big box stores don't want you to know. 
Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint, and more. Emma Warehouse is located six miles west of LaGrange in downtown Emma. Call 260-593-2769 for more information. She's got six. six. Back at Westview High School, we got an extra basket floating around here trying to figure out where it goes. So, <laughs> so yeah, right now, uh, Weinberg has 10 points and, and, and uh, Bree Corey with 13 leading the way for us right now. But uh, So all tied up. 2.28 to go, Sturgis will be bringing the ball the length of the floor. And the alternating possession arrow pointing to Westview, so if we have another tie ball, it will go to the Lady Warriors. Smith brings the ball across the timeline. Gets it to Ote at the top of the key. She was looking for Burr cutting inside, Travel. and she traveled. A bit of a, almost an unforced error there. So let's see if we can take advantage of that. 2.15 to go. Westview ball now. And they are applying pressure again. So I'm going to bring it further back to give us a little room to maneuver. Hope is going to walk it across the timeline. Kicks it back out to Olivia. Now Karras to Janessa. All the way in, put it up, couldn't get it to go. Ote with the rebound and still tied up. Minute 50 to go, Down, long pass down to Burr. She's gonna dribble inside, gets it, trying to get it in there, puts it up way too hard, was Carey, and Janessa pulls down the rebound. So 134 to go, still tied up, Westview ball. Karras with the ball. Looking inside, back out to Olivia. Punches it inside to, to Hope and almost tied up there by Smith. Working the ball around inside to Bree. Puts it up off the front of the iron. Can't get it to go. She got a piece of it. I, they're calling a jump ball. <laughs> I wasn't sure what they were gonna call. Carver and Webb back in for the Lady Trojans. And Ryan's calling another timeout. Minute nine to go. Looking at end game strategy. So we'll take a 30 second timeout and we'll be back. What's what would you do in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. He's been consistent this whole half. I think we haven't been looking for the outside shot no, at they all. Haven't. I think they really like to see the ball in Bree's hands if they can get it to her. Uh, but we'll see if they if that's the strategy or. Well, and, and with the way that we've been, everybody else has been staying way out. It's hard for anybody to drop back to yeah. double team her. Yeah. So. Yeah. It looks like uh, yeah, Coach Ryan was just asking. He's still got two timeouts left, and I think mm -hmm. Juanita was saying that Sturgis might still have one. One, okay. Yeah. So a minute nine to go. We'll be triggering it in underneath their own basket. Olivia Bond trigger with the ball. And stolen, and then stolen back, and then and now we got to tie up and turn over. I sort of think, yeah, I was going to say it's, the board for a second still said Westview. I think the yeah. uh, the official scorekeeper forgot to move forgot it. Forgot to flip and He it. real quick did. <laughs> <laughs> now it's back to Westview be getting the next one. So just under a minute to go. Smith with the ball. Drives. And stolen by Bontrager. And now Janessa gets it across to Hope. Hope passes it to Bree. She goes all the way in and then scores yeah. on the dribble. And Coach Buckland wants to talk things over for Sturgis. So Westview takes a 
two-point lead, scored the last four points. Yep, 37-35. And I think this is a full timeout, so we'll take a 60-second timeout as well. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, class coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. Are you looking for unlimited high-speed internet with no contract and no credit check? No matter where you live, it's available. Bringing America together. JNR Solutions Internet Service Provider. Call them at 574-349-7673. And we're back, 40.3 seconds to go. Sturgis needs to bring the ball the length of the floor. Uh, during that timeout, uh, yeah, Randy, you were talking about the fact that they have not, uh, Sturgis has not committed any fouls this quarter. So if they want to make us shoot to stop the clock, they've got a long ways to go. That's true, it comes back to hurt them. Yeah. So Smith brings the ball down on the right side, across to Carver. And she's trying to get it back to Smith. Cross court pass. Burr put, or Carey puts up the shot. Can't get it to go. Lehman got the rebound. And Ote knocked it out of, man, that's, that was a quick, <laughs> just quick little jab there. She is very quick. And she can jump. So Westview will be triggering it in in front of the Sturgis bench. 22.7 seconds to go. The main thing is we don't want to turn it over right here in front of their own basket. Mortner has the ball, gets it to Karras, and she's gonna, and we have a turnover. Ote drives in, can't get it to go, and put back up by Angela Carey. Couldn't get it to go either, so 11.4 seconds to go, and Carey's gonna go to the line to shoot a couple. That foul called on Janessa Lehman, her fourth. See, Carey has not been to the line yet tonight. As a team, they are five of nine right now. And that shot off the back of the iron, no good. So as long as they, as long as we get the rebound. Yeah. And 30 second timeout. Maybe we'll just keep it right here, Randy. So. And we I'm were kind of sure fortunate they missed that little bunny there on the baseline. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> and then missed the, one of the free throws. So even if she yeah. makes this one, but the thing of it is, we're having troubles getting the ball down the floor, so. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yep, if we can just hang on to the ball. They can't foul us enough times to get us to the free throw line. With well, 11 so seconds. it also means they could be extremely aggressive in trying to swat the ball away because yeah, I mean, it, it's not going to hurt him. It'll stop the clock. So right. So uh, right. yeah, expect to get hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, if you get the ball, expect contact. Yeah. Just hang on strong. So 11.4 seconds to go. Westview up by two. 37-35. And we've got sophomore Angela Carey at the line to shoot another free throw. She missed the one just previous. Obviously, we got to get this rebound if she misses. That's the well, right. If she key. misses, so shot up and it is no good. And Karis gets the rebound and she's trying to she hang on to dribbled. it. She double dribbled. Yeah. Seven point eight seconds to go. Trying to do a <laughs> crossover dribble, and Sturgis is going to take their last <laughs> timeout. So we are now at four fouls, so <laughs> what do you do, Randy? Yeah. Do you, do you try to foul, they pick <laughs> yeah. and shoot. We'll take a 30 second timeout and we'll be back for the last 7.8 seconds. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. 
Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. All right, we're back. 37-35, Westview hanging on to a two-point lead, but Sturgis will have the ball on their own end of the floor. Uh, no threes have been made in this second half, so, but I mean, obviously if they drive inside, make it, they could they could get a three-point play that way. Yeah. Got to play tough defense, and if we do foul them, it will put them at the line to shoot a couple and stop the clock, so. I know that's not they're, ideal. <laughs> they're five for 11 tonight from the free throw line, less than 50%, but you hate to bank on yeah. them missing two, yeah, so putting them on the line. So a steal here would be okay. Yes, we can, <laughs> we can handle that. Carver to trigger it in for the Lady Trojans. And she's looking, looking for Smith up front. Got it into Ote, and Janessa tried to steal the ball, knocks it out of bounds. So down to 4.6 seconds. Boy, if that would have been huge if she could have actually got that thing. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna try it again with just a little less time on the clock. Carver with the ball, Webb underneath, and tried to put it up, blocked by, oh my goodness, Ote got the ball and put it back up. It would not go. Lady oh Warriors pick up their second win of the year, hung on for a 35-37, very tightly contested game. Uh, we'll be back to take a look at some final stats and scoring here at Westview on LaguanaMedia.com. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months, and save up to $1,400. Does your paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialists will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. Pizza Depot on South Jefferson Street in Millersburg features delicious pizza and breadsticks along with fresh salads. Dine-in, carry-out, and delivery are all available at Pizza Depot. Pizza Depot, 104 South Jefferson Street in Millersburg. 574-642-4222. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn. Quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. Back at Westview High School, exciting conclusion to a game. Sturgis had a chance to twice try to put a shot up. First one blocked by Bree Corey, and then Ote for Sturgis got the ball and got it off, but missed the putback. Uh, of course, if she'd have made it, it would have just been a, a tie game, and we'd have kept going. So Westview ends up picking up their second victory of the year, 37-35. And Randy, we got some a wrap up on scoring there for us. Yeah. For the victorious uh, Lady Warriors here, we will start out with uh, Karis Weinberg. Are you guys on the had four field goals, two for three at the line for 10. Olivia Bontrager had a field goal, two for two at the line for four. Hope Bordner had a basket, two for two at the line for four. Janessa Lehman had a basket for two. JJ Weststone a basket for two. Bree Corey, again, a big, big basketball game. She hit a big shot at the end. 
to kind of propel us into the lead. She ended up with uh, a total of 15 points on uh, seven field goals and one for two at the line for Westview's total of 37. For the uh, Sturgis Trojans tonight, they went, they're scoring went this way. Uh, Yana Ote had nine on four field goals and one for two at the line. Uh, Angela Carey had a basket for two. Kylie Brooks had a basket for two. Marley Carver had a three-pointer and one for two at the line for four. Sydney Burr had five on a three-pointer and a two-pointer. And their leading score tonight was number 44, Madison Webb. She finished the night with 13 on a total of uh, four, five, four field goals, five field goals? Five field goals, I think. And three for four at the line. So for their total of 35 points. Yeah, so interesting, that just looking at that, uh, looking at free throws in the second half, um, we only shot two, we made them both. That was in the third quarter. They were one of two in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, the Lady Trojans were one of four. Okay. And that would have been huge if they'd have made some more of their free throws. It's Absolutely. <laughs> those free throws can be so important. They sure can. So we were seven for 10 for the game, right? That's what that I'm showing. That was big, yeah. 70%. And what did yep. you say they were? They were under 50%? Five for 11? They were five for 11. Yeah. Yeah, five for 11. So, yeah. So, and you have. Uh, as you far have as rebounds here, uh, Westview had 29 for the game. Not uh, quite the 44. Not they quite were on 44. Pace <laughs> and Sturgis had 25. So there were a lot of rebounds, a lot of missed yeah. shots tonight. Turnovers, Westview ended up with probably more than Coach Yoder would like. Uh, let's see, 23 for the game. And uh, let's see, Sturgis had a total of 18. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it uh, wasn't always pretty, but it was it was it was a fun game to watch tonight. Yeah. And uh, that was we were missing one of our starters and, and still wa uh, pulled off the win and. Their next game is this coming Tuesday night. It'll be a girls-boys doubleheader when we host Lakeland. And uh, hopes are high that we can add another win to the, the column here for the Lady uh, Warriors. Uh, Lakeland's really struggling this year as well. They have, as far as I know, they have not won yet, unless they had a game last night or something. Uh, no, fun. they were 0-11 going to tonight's game with Eastside, and Eastside's 10-1. So yeah, unless yeah, they that's pull that's off a major <coughs> upset, that's uh, right, they'll yeah. probably come in winless. Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, but uh, rival games, you just got to be ready to play them no matter what the records are. Right, yeah. <laughs> you never know. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us here tonight. Uh, again, like we said, our next game will be Tuesday evening, and we'll be doing the girls and the boys game. So the girls should be going on the air somewhere around 6 o'clock, I would imagine. The um, It's always a little bit dependent on the junior varsity contests happening prior to that. And I think what they're – what they've started doing the last year or two is uh, they'll have both junior varsity teams playing at the same time using the two gyms, and then they'll uh, the 6 o'clock slot or whenever the, the junior varsity game that's being played on the main gym finishes up uh, will be happening here on the main floor, first the girls varsity and then the boys varsity. So thanks to uh, Randy Yoder for doing the color again for us this evening. Uh, this is Dan Byler play-by-play play tonight. Thanks to Chloe Lovell running the board for us and for Ian Donat running the camera for us tonight. Tonight's game sponsor was Weaver Furniture Sales with two locations in Chipshawana. Pre-game sponsor this year is JNR Solutions providing unlimited internet. And our halftime sponsor, Pizza Depot in Millersburg and soon opening in Middlebury. Also brought to you by Chipshawana Trading Place. Uh, by Height Auto Body in LaGrange, by Yoder Crossroads just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana, by Emma Warehouse, downtown Emma, by Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka, Stutzman Power Equipment in Shipshawana, by Freedom Finish Works also in Topeka, Shipshi Automotive Service also just south of 5 and 20 in Shipshawana, by Animal Care Clinic of Topeka, by LaGuana, your local creative services provider, Jerry Standard Service downtown Middlebury, and Southwood Flooring in Shipshawana. Today's game was a presentation of Laguana Media and the IHSAA Champions Network. Thanks for joining us and have a good evening.